Okay, guys, uh, I'll, I'll be brief in my statements. We can get to some questions, but uh, excited about the the amount of kids and the number of guys that we signed for, for our uh, early signing period. The early signing period is becoming the signing period now, and um, we identified positions and identified some players and, and uh, really proud of our staff. Uh, um, we thought we did really well today. Obviously, time will tell, but uh, we're really excited about uh, the class that we signed. Uh, obviously, we're in the middle of finals. We're in the middle of game prep. Um, part of the reason that uh, we're heading to practice is we have one small window because the guys are having finals until 3.50 and then start up again at 6.10. And so our window to practice is really about 3.50 till about uh, uh, 5.30 or so. So that's uh, kind of why um, I'm in a little bit shorter time period today. But uh, uh, prep's going well. Um, we're probably four days, four solid days into it now and uh, excited about where, where we're at and the guys uh, are working hard. I know they have a lot on their plate, but they're doing a good job of separating um, their academics from their football once they get over here. So we'll open it up. Coach, you guys, you know, utilize the, the junior college ranks for, for a couple positions, specifically, you know, the defense line, offensive line. And not only did you get the experienced players, you got decorated players, a couple All-Americans in there. Mm -hmm. how, how valuable is it to have guys that, you know, earned awards or, or clearly accomplished junior college players coming into the program? Well, the awards is, aren't a big thing to me. We just saw uh, those guys being a fit. Uh, we were able to obviously evaluate film, but more importantly, see practices. And that was the key, is to be able to see some guys uh, run around in practice. And we were able to do that during the two weeks when we were out. And uh, obviously, you're right, uh, those are two big areas, the defensive tackle position specifically. We needed to uh, try to fill some holes because we're losing a lot of seniors there. And then uh, um, one defensive end, and then uh, offensive line, obviously, we lose a lot of guys there, so it's another area that uh, it, that we're we're happy with uh, what we've done. We're still doing some work there too. You offered Carver Willis at the camp over the summer. Yeah, he was a guy that actually didn't have pads on, and he had to go one on one against guys that did have yeah. pads on. Did that, did that make the evaluation more or less challenging? Um, you know, we still we saw the physicality in film. We wanted to see the athleticism, and the athleticism uh, was there in camp, and that was a big thing that we needed to see and Coach Riley needed to see was ability to sink his hips, ability to move his feet, ability to have good hand placement. You could tell he was a technician, and so um, once we saw him do those things, we felt pretty comfortable. You got like, I'm sorry, go ahead. What, what do you like most about the group that you got at corner? Uh, length. You know, that's the biggest thing that we see is uh, that we need to continue to recruit to uh, is is length. You know, getting some size there. Um, we know that we need to ha have corners that even the guys that are on our team, and we've talked to those guys, we need heavier guys. We need guys to be able to put on 10, 15, 20 pounds at the corner position. You always want a guy uh, that's that's taller, that's that's ideal, but uh, we need length, we need weight, we need all those things, and that's not only the guys we have coming in, but the guys we have coming back too, But because we're just, we need to get bigger and stronger there. With T. Denson specifically, what, what do you like most about it? Um, really smart player, uh, won a state championship in Georgia, played an awful lot of football. Uh, they do an awful lot uh, at, at his high school, so he was a really intelligent kid, has the length, has the size, um, competitor, um, and um, yeah, obviously he's a young player, but we feel he has an opportunity to compete right away. You've had great success with quarterbacks over the years. What do you like about Will Howard? His favorite player is Carson Wentz. <laughs> you know, that's the that's for starters. Um, that was uh, obviously a big sell. And uh, you know, when when uh, you know he and his, his folks sat in my office and saw the pictures of Carson Wentz and, and knew my background with Carson and and uh, the success that Carson had had in within the, the within the system. Um, but he's a really really smart football player. He's athletic. He's got a really strong arm. He's a guy that's a sponge that wants to learn. Uh, and he comes at semester, which is huge for us to be able to get him in. Same thing with Jaron last year. I think that's a big advantage to get those guys in at semester. Uh, and so we're excited to, to continue to bring competition to the quarterback room. Hey, given what you know, I mean, uh, kind of Jaron Lewis setting that footstep for you here, um, footprint for you here at K-State as far as getting guys in the program, getting them ingrained. What, what can Will Howard expect during the spring as far as ingraining himself into the 
Skyler's off? Well, just being around Skyler for starters, you know, I'm excited because he can be a sponge to Skyler for a year with Skyler having a year uh, of eligibility left and be a sponge to, to Colin Klein, who's done a phenomenal job with Skyler and just getting around our, our older guys, getting around the system, getting around uh, Coach Mess as well. I, and, and, he's, and Will's excited about that. Will, uh, it's, he's had it planned out so he could go wherever he was going to go at semester. And we were fortunate enough to land him this summer and then be able to hold on to him for six months. Uh, and, and so I'm so excited because um, uh, he has really good ability and he's got the, the ability and the want to to learn what we're doing. What is it about uh, Chris Vaughn that stands out to you? Uh, Deuce is an electric guy. We call him Deuce. He's an electric guy. Um, he's a home run hitter, and that's something that we're excited about. He's got great quicks, uh, but he's got a second gear, too, uh, to take it uh, the distance. Excellent receiver out of the backfield as well. Really good hands, and so he will allow us to do a lot of things, whether we have him in the backfield, which we plan on, putting him flexed out like we've done with Phillip, um, return game. Uh, you, you can't have enough explosive players, and, and he brings that to the table. And with so many players already signed, what are you still looking to fill towards the traditional signing day? Yeah, we, we still are, are looking for every position. I mean, there's nothing that we're going to say, well, we're, we're filled up there. We're, we're looking for every position. And and, uh, and so as we go out in January, we don't need as we don't need as many because we signed a number of guys. But uh, there's nothing that we feel like we can't help or enhance our, our football team. We have um, a number of guys coming back. But uh, we need to continue to, to fill our roster with quality, great character, great integrity guys that uh, um, want to be uh, K-State Wildcats and are going to do all the little things right to, to be successful, not only uh, on the field, but more importantly off the field. And that's the thing that we're looking for is it's still a fit. You you've, you have to have high character and high integrity to, to be in this program. And uh, the talent level um, will rise to the top when, uh, when you have great players or great people here. Offensive line was a position of need. How do you feel like you addressed that? as well as the tight end position. Yeah, um, offensive line we're excited about. Uh, you know, we, we talked about the uh, Dawson Del Forge, a Wamigo kid from uh, uh, Butler that uh, has played an awful lot of football, and, and I'm excited to bring him back closer to home. Uh, Carver Willis, we talked about. Taylor Warner is going to start on the offensive line. Taylor, I think, is a, is as good an athlete uh, as I've seen as a high school player coming into the fold uh, for a college. Yeah, obviously, he's got to continue to gain some weight and get bigger and stronger. But uh, excited about the uh, uh, those guys and then you know the tight end fullback position we have a number of guys um, that, that we feel are going to fit that Will Swanson's one of them Christian Moore's one of them um, you know we're hoping Cody Stuffelbean he could play either D end or tight tight end we haven't totally set on, on where he's going to start but uh, um, he's got the size the length um, to be a, a really big good athlete for us. I know you're doing the blue shirt deal with Sam Shields, but just what do you like about him? I can't talk about anybody that's not on the list. Can you uh, talk about Whit Mitchell, your yeah. late addition? What, what kind of athleticism does he bring? Uh, Whit was a, a, a tremendous defensive player on film that we saw with his length, with his ability to bend, with his ability to be a really good athlete in space. Um, we just, we're projecting, and that's something that uh, I think uh, we've really done a good job of our staff of projecting guys, and Riles has done that a bunch um, at, at NDSU of projecting guys that we think are, are long, good athletes that can run, uh, and we feel that with Wit, and he's a physical kid. Kid. And so we're going to we're going to plug him in at tackle because he has uh, enough length and enough height. And obviously he's, he needs to come here, gain weight and do those other things. But uh, excited about the athleticism and on the blue shirt thing. I know you can't discuss specifics, but can you explain the rule real quickly? And what class, if hypothetically you get some guys in the fall, would they count it? the next year? And that's in 2021. Yeah. Okay. How important was Nate Matlack to this class being the first guy to, to really come on board? Huge. Um, and uh, Nate's been a, a catalyst for, for Taylor Bratt and, and as far as continuing to, to bring in other guys into the fold and, and try to communicate with those guys through social media. Nate's a, a tremendous football player, uh, a better kid from a great family. Uh, they love K-State. They want to be a part of K-State. And uh, we need guys, you know, I, we talked about the state of Kansas and the Kansas City area specifically. We need guys 
from the, from the state of Kansas and Kansas City specifically uh, that want to be a part of K-State football because there's such great players in that region as well as the state that uh, I think, Nate, not only from this year's class, but moving forward will help us uh, in, in the future with other kids from the state. I ask about Jay Harris, too, and, and what you like most about what he brings to the table. Uh, the fact that he's playing in a state championship this weekend. Yeah, I want winners. I want guys that have been at championship level or playing championship level. He and Tripp are both playing in a state championship game. Uh, excited for those guys, and, and success breeds success. Winning is a habit, and, and those guys know how to win. Same thing with T. Denson, uh, knows how to win, won a state championship. That's that's huge. You know, uh, Will Howard was uh, player of the year in the southern part of Pennsylvania, uh, led his team as far as they'd ever gone. Uh, don't make Make no mistake, being from successful programs is important, and that's something that we look at. Is it the almighty thing? No, but it's something that uh, is important because the expectation is high here uh, to be successful, and, and we want those guys that have been through that expectation and know uh, that winning is is the, the most important thing. You, you mentioned Ronald Triplett. Do you see him as a defensive tackle or a defensive end more right? You know, we love his athleticism, so we'll see where his body goes. If, he's, if he, he, he could... Play defensive tackle in a speed package right now like we do against a lot of the spread teams. What will his body do? Where will he go in the next year and a half? That's what we have to find out. But Tripp's a really good athlete. You guys got off to a really fast start in recruiting. How did that really make this a much more smooth and, and <laughs> process for you? Um, you'd have to ask Sped, to be honest with you. Ask Taylor that. Um, the past few years, that's the only way I've known how to do it, to get off to a fast start and then continue on. Recruiting, it's not, it's every day. I mean, it's every day. And, and you have to stay on these guys and you have to build relationships and you have to, um, you know, show them how much you're committed to them, show them how much uh, they mean to you in the program. And, and so that's the only thing that, that I have known and, and the guys that I've been around have known. And so, you know, we'll start right away on the 2021 class and, and move forward as far as, um, you know, we need to make sure that we don't take a day off in recruiting. Your staff left campus a lot during June for a lot of satellite camps. I think you found little swans in that way. Mm -hmm. How beneficial was that? Is it a trend will continue? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, it was a benefit maybe to weed people or weed the numbers down more than anything. Um, I, I'm still a, a big proponent on getting them to your campus because that's the key. You, you guys know this. Manhattan, Kansas State is a hidden gem. You got to get here. And if you get here, people are like, wow, this place is unbelievable. Whit Mitchum came here this weekend, didn't know anything about Kansas State. It's like, holy cow, th this, is, this is really cool. Justin Gardner from Hutch came here this weekend. Like, wow, this place is awesome. I can't, I, um, and they were sold right away, not only with the people, but facilities, community, all those things. And so I still want them to come to our campus, but uh, I don't know where that's going to go. I think the NCAA legislation may even make some adjustments to that. Boy, this is easy. <laughs> well, Paul, do you get a sense that as the season went on and you guys have won more games, that recruits became more and more receptive to you guys? Um, you know, potentially, but a lot of those relationships we built before we'd played a game, um, uh, without, without a doubt, we had a lot of kids here for the Oklahoma game, and I think that opened up more eyes, uh, which is always a good thing to say, wow, they're, they're, they're close or they're getting it done or uh, they see the, the vision and the plan that, that our, uh, our staff has and says, wow, I want to be a part of that. And so without question, our success doesn't hurt us. Um, but I still believe that your relationships with, with the family and with the young man are the most important thing in those kids making the final decision. How much different was it recruiting for an entire cycle this year as opposed to last year? It was just better. I mean, you know the guys much better. That's the thing that, you know, a year ago when we were here, um, that's why Taylor was probably up front and, and Colin and Blake were up front. I, I didn't know the guys. I'd maybe talk to them on the phone. Now I know all the guys. And, and whether I've been to their place or they've been here, um, and I've been in constant communication with these guys for some of them a full year, some of them, 
you know, half a year, some of them a few months, but uh, you, you, somebody on our staff has been in contact with them for a long time. And obviously that is, that is huge because it just goes back to the building of relationships. Uh, Coach Klanneman, he recruited the state of Texas for the first time in his career, I believe. Just how impressive was what he was able to do? Joe can recruit anybody from anywhere. Joe's one of the best recruiters I've ever been around. He builds relationships with the kids, builds relationships with the families, um, is real, is genuine. Um, Joe, Joe's a special talent as, as not only as a DB coach, he's phenomenal there, but as a recruiter, I, I know that he is as thorough a guy as I've ever been around.